Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to The Edit Place. And on my main channel, I've been doing a couple videos on the DaVinci Resolve for iPad beta that Blackmagic was kind enough to put me in the loop in. There's a lot of debate out there of, is this an app that you would use as a standalone where you can create a whole video or do you need a secondary computer? And this is kind of just, um, you know, a, a support product for it. There's truth in everything, but in this video, I wanted to showcase what it looks like if this is your only device and you're solely using Resolve for iPad what can you do to create a cool short video? Or in my case, I'm gonna create a short video, but you could expand it to longer form stuff. So I've got a hard drive plugged in with a bunch of footage from a recent commercial I shot. We're gonna open up Resolve, and even though technically I have a project for it, we're gonna start a new project and just kind of create a cool sequence and show you what the whole workflow looks like. Of course, first thing is new project. I'm using Blackmagic Cloud, so it's syncing all of my projects. Uh, from my computer, which is really nice and give it a random title name and that brings us to a blank page on the uh, Cut page first thing we're gonna do is import our media which we can do right here If you already have media in there You can right-click with two fingers if you're using a trackpad or if you don't have a keyboard And you're just using like an Apple pencil your finger go ahead and press and hold on the display and a long hold is gonna be the equivalent to a right-click if you do import media, it's gonna open up the files app, which is how we're gonna access this hard drive. Or if they're just in your photos app, you can import from photos wherever you are finding your stuff. Mine is on this backup drive here and it's all inside this folder. Now it's amazing that you can import B-RAW footage into an iPad now, but of course the file system doesn't have B-RAW support. So if you open up the files app or in this stage, you're not gonna see clip previews, which is kind of a con. So you kind of just have to import everything or know what file names you're specifically looking for. Doesn't matter too much in this case, because of course I want to import everything. So I'm just going to go ahead, command A that, hit open, and we can see all of our footage import very nicely over here. You do have bins just like on the desktop resolve. They're just kind of hidden up here to save space, which is really nice. So you can add bin uh, for this shoot. There was like product specific stuff. And I'm gonna do interior, exterior, maybe like assets for music, graphics, whatever. I'd love to hear how you guys organize bins. I always just break it down pretty simplistically. Um, but yeah, so now I'm just gonna go through and uh, move around my footage, which is really nice and easy. A lot of people have been asking me too, which iPad I'm using and like, oh, does it work on the M1? Uh, or does it have to be the latest M2? This is a, a year, year and a half old uh, M1 12.9 inch. Under the one terabyte options are the eight gigs of RAM. So yeah, this isn't the M2, but it is the maxed out M1 option. And if we wanted to import music here, again, I keep all of my music actually in iCloud Drive and documents. Just import some of these options here. All right, so now we got some music. I think I'll probably go with this second one here. The sequence that we're creating is basically just kind of like a B-roll on top of music. So that's why I'm figuring out music first. And I'm just gonna set my ins and out points. Probably just make this like 30 seconds or whatever it is. So now that we have everything organized, we have our music down below here. And so we can start adding stuff in. And I wanna start with kind of a, a, a really cool, interesting opening, kind of good hook shot. And so we got this really nice bucket of stuff being thrown, here it is. And you can see scrubbing through this, I mean, this is full 6K B-Raw and it's cutting through it like butter. Obviously there's no color grades on anything yet. If I wanna start this right here. Mud being, this product is like about cleaning windshields just to give you some context. Uh, we can see that our aspect ratios are not matching the project settings. Um, I don't know why I totally skipped over the project settings. It's defaulting to a 1080p um, I do want to up res that a bit. I actually really like DCI, so I'm going to go with that. And I also like to change my scaling to with crop. That way I don't have to like remember. Um, and you can see that instantly scaled it and filled in to crop. Today's video is sponsored by Detail. I've been talking about them quite a bit, but it's just because they keep busting out new features. Detail is a Mac application that utilizes all of your devices from 
smartphone to an iPad to professional cameras that you can connect all to one central hub and make simple, amazing multi-cam recordings. One of their latest features introduces AI. Once you are done making a multi-cam recording for a podcast or shooting a tutorial like this, that project then can get uploaded to your own private server where AI will generate a highlights reel, giving you the transcript that you can copy to upload somewhere as captions, it will give you recommended hashtags to use, and it will give you highlight moments broken down from the video in various different formats and aspect ratios, automatically giving you amazing content for all your social platforms. This removes the massive headache of creating so much content for all the different platforms and having to manually set up projects and re-export things and heck even choose what there is to export. Their most recent update can be found in the Mac App Store, and so if you guys wanna check that out, the link will be down in the description below. Again, thanks Detail for sponsoring today's video. Now I would love to speed ramp this shot right here. Uh, I think it would be a perfect moment to do that, kinda like really fast, like right before the beat, and it's already like splashing right on the beat, but you don't have your speed ramping curves in Resolve for iPad, at least, yeah, I need to preface that this again is a beta, so more features are being added before it gets public. Obviously, even once it goes public, they're gonna keep adding features, um, but for where the, the beta is currently, there is no uh, speed curve. But we can go in and change speed. So I'm curious if we can kind of fake it, kind of do a, a poor man speed ramp. And for that, what we're going to do is go to the point where it kind of hits the windshield. We're gonna make a cut and then we're going to change speed. And I'm basically just gonna speed it up. Oh, it's at the point now where it's like gonna be ridiculous. Okay, I need to start typing numbers in. Uh, maybe like 150%, too far, okay, okay, too far, 100%. This, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> maybe, maybe right there. Let's see. Let's see what we're working with. What? Oh, I hate when it does that. When I made the cut, it's basically changing the speed of the entire clip. I can't compound the clip to then do that. That's not working. Uh, so we are just going to nix that idea. I have basically two major pet peeves with the cut page. One of them is about waveforms and I talk about it all the time. Second one is not being able to scale the timeline. Like all, I, all I'm hitting right now is command plus and minus to zoom in so I can like fine tune this, this clip right on top of the waveform. Can't do that on the cut page. It's infuriating. I think we'll do that sort of thing. And actually I need to add in a graphic. All right, I just airdropped that to myself, add it to my assets bin. So I'm going to import from photos. I'm just gonna use part of that for here. All right, I'm gonna go back to my product stuff. Quick of him putting it down. Then we have a shot of him opening. Beautiful. Little parallax going. By the way, shout out to James from Stoffer Garage for uh, being the model of this commercial. Right, you guys gotta get, uh, be getting bored of this stuff, so we are going to just start dropping in some clips. There was a shot here that we need to have it locked off, be on a tripod, and then show two different parts of it afterwards. I don't think it was this exact shot, but uh, you guys will get the idea. Drag that in, and of course you can have many layers to go with it, and you have all of your inspector stuff here. And one of the things that I love that they've done with um, the iPad version compared to the desktop is how it intelligently adapts knowing that it is on a smaller display. The desktop version doesn't really know what size display you're on. So I also have a 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro, very baseline, um, basically less spec than this, half the amount of RAM. And it feels very, very, very crowded but here, when you hide like the bins in a drop-down menu, but also if you noticed the when I opened the inspector, the media bins closed so that it could keep my player the same size and kind of just scoot things over. If I turn this 
uh, back to the media page, the inspector goes away. And you can do all that on the desktop version. I, I showed that off in one of my other videos. You can turn things off to kind of hide the user interface to make it look more simplistic, but you have to do it manually there where here it's doing it for you so you don't even have to think about it. I know I need to go to my inspector so I automatically go there. I don't need the media bin right now and I can go in and basically I need to crop half of this. And so I'm going to go to the halfway point to blend it a bit more. I'm just gonna turn up the softness and it's like, Perfect, I love this. If you're having trouble with playing things back, if it's stuttering or stumbling to play back your footage, you can go to the top and if you have proxies created, you can use those proxies. But from what I can see, there's no creating proxies in Resolve right now. So if I right click on a clip, I, I can link proxies, I can do all that, but I can't actually generate things like I do on the media page. The best thing to do if you're solely working on the iPad is to change the uh, timeline resolution or just turning off effects. So right now there's no color grades or anything, but I'll show you this little button in a few minutes. When we turn that on and off, that will help tremendously, especially if you're adding like noise reduction. But you can also quickly change your timeline resolution, which is intended to be used for like, oh, if you're going from 69 to like TikTok or IG real content real quick, you can go to portrait but you'd be surprised the performance you can get if you go from like 4K project down to 1080p. It takes no time at all. It's gonna make editing way smoother and then right before you go to export it, you simply just change back to Ultra HD. And once we go into the color page, uh, again, this is the full freaking color page from the desktop version. And here I haven't noticed much intelligent UI adapting, it feels very much like the desktop one. So even our bins over here aren't like the nice drop down menu, it, it does push things and you have to turn things on and off to simplify the user interface. So for example, if you want to get a bigger player going, I would suggest turning off clips, turn that on and off when you know you need to go to a different clip. Um, of course you can turn off nodes, but that's, you know, you only want to do that if you know what node you're working in and turn off LUTs. This is kind of the setup that I like to go with. All the keyboard shortcuts work the same. And so I'm gonna go back to my LUTs and I'm just gonna apply the Gen 5. And because this is the clip where I have it like cropped halfway, I'm just gonna make our adjustments to this one. I need to make the detail real harsh you can see that the, the playback is stuttering a bit. And I'm even gonna add one more LUT on top of that. I love using this one from Motion VFX, but I don't want it to be 100%. I'll lively it up a bit. Cool, that looks pretty good. And one of my favorite features of Resolve is being able to not just like color match, but to create a still, which then goes into your gallery. And if I turn back on the clips and I go to the other clip here, that's gonna be the left side, I can just apply grade and it's going to apply those exact nodes that I put on the right hand side. Of course, you can go in and make adjustments if you wanted to, but in this clip's case, that would be kind of detrimental to blending it. So I'm actually gonna leave it where it is now. But what I was talking about before is if I go back to the cut page here and I'm watching it back, you can see it's struggling a little bit. It's pretty uh, pretty intense grade on there. There's no noise reduction. But if I wanna get instant playback again, I can just turn off all of my effects and you can see that it plays back just great. Now just for the sake of time, uh, I'm going to show you that, again, you can loosely just go in, select all the clips you want, apply, some grade to it. Obviously, it's not going to look good on especially the exteriors. So I'll try to save those a bit more. Grab a new still out of that. And then that way I can go around and anything that is an exterior, I guess just those other ones. I'll apply this too. Make your fine adjustments as, as you wish. You can go Command F, of course, to 
few things full screen. A lot of people are forgetting that the iPad Pros have what Apple calls like the Pro Display XDR or something. This is basically the best quality HDR monitor that you can get in its price point. Not to mention that there's a whole computer inside of it, but just for the display, it's an it's a smaller display, don't get me wrong, like a, a true professional colorist isn't gonna make their career on a 13 inch iPad. But at least when you're looking at the colors for accuracy, you can feel comfortable knowing that when you export things and share it out that your color grade's gonna look real nice. Now I know I didn't use a lot of this stuff, but of course you, you have all of your um, transitions. I may try like, ugh, transitions can be really, really ugly. And goes with the sound, I like it. We have uh, titles that we can use. So right now we just have all these built-in ones. I'm honestly pretty, pretty basic. Just gonna go with one of these, bring up the inspector. Option uh, drag does not duplicate. It's annoying. If I paste it. Exactly what I wanted to happen, but whatever. Oh, that's frustrating. <laughs> On the computer, if your mouse gets to the right of the screen, you can keep moving your finger and it'll keep scrolling. But here it actually like, it stops and you have to like reset. So, well, no, what I should have done is I have this turned on and I should have just done that. And yeah, you have your full uh, effects and stuff in here, literally like all resolved effects stuff in here. It's It's pretty, Pretty incredible. So once you're happy with your edit, everything saves in real time. So if you were using a secondary device, this is where you'd go in and you know move over to that and you know do whatever else you need to do. But since this video is all about like fully using the iPad, all we have left to do is export it. And I'm gonna set it as H265, so it's smaller, more efficient. We're just gonna hit export. We can choose where to let it go. I'll say desktop is fine. And yeah, it's estimating around 25 seconds to export a 32 second video. Not the fastest export I've ever seen. I'd be curious to see what like an M2 can do, but um, not too shabby. So you guys have it that is start to finish editing on an iPad in DaVinci Resolve. Does it have all the features you were looking for? What features are you excited to be added in the future? Thanks again to Detail for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna see more editing videos, make sure you get subscribed. See you guys in the next one.